Hi everybody and welcome to one of my favourite spots of the garden on my little island today to create for you a floral column. And this one is for my you, my florists. I really want to make sure that as part of your membership, not only are you getting the business chats, but you're also getting specific techniques that are, are going to be really helpful in your industry and that are really industry focused, so more advanced design. And this is one of those, uh, specifically for wedding and event work and a little alternative to a floral arch. And of course it's foam free. A little ugly right now, but I assure you this will become the most beautiful and dreamy ethereal floral column. So today we're going to uh, present this to you in a few different ways. We're going to have uh, a very detailed up close of the mechanics and, and why I choose these particular mechanics for this design. Uh, also talk to you about the stability of this design, how it can be used for essentially on a solid ground in front of a church or a, you know a pergola or something that's it's a solid concrete say flooring and also how that can be used in a garden space on grass or actually into a pot or something like that. So have lots of different ways that you can incorporate this design into a variety of different landscapes. Also the flowers that I'm using, we'll talk about those as we go and then I will uh, talk you through the process, what I do first and why. Um, that's a, a really important aspect of creating this design in a, in a format or a, or a flow. Okay, so let me talk you through these mechanics and why I've created such a I know, it's a little ugly right now, uh, base mechanics for this particular design. So if you can imagine, this is just one of two columns that I create when I'm, I'm designing these for an event. So essentially I wanted to create something that was a little alternative and a little more natural and free flowing than a structured archway. So the two would be either side of the ceremony area to frame the couple and essentially not quite joined together. So depending on the way that you want to use your material you can actually create a full natural arch or for this instance you can create two separate floral columns that just um, really naturally disappear into the air which and they're beautiful usually standing at about a bit taller than head height and something that it could be used straight into the ground or into this heavy base which I've used here. So let me talk you through that. So as you, you can see that the, the stem, this is a branch <laughs> first of all, with a pointed, just shaved down the base of it so that it's really pointy and really sharp. And that's so that for two reasons. One, that it can go into this base here, which is concrete that I have put inside a bucket and, you know, molded it to the size of a, say half a bucket with a um, pipe center, which is just plastic pipe. That way the stem of the branch can go straight into the pipe. I can then move it around. Um, it's, it's, you know, not so heavy that I can't pick it up, but it's heavy enough that it stays really secure on the base um, other than in gale force winds. Um, the other reason why I've got a sharp end on that branch is so that it could essentially be pushed into the sand if you're doing a beach ceremony, um, into the soil, uh, into a, sometimes I've even used large um, pots at a venue that that have, you know, didn't have any plants in them, but there was soil and I've actually pushed the stem into the soil and then the design was just magically growing out of the pot. So a couple of different options there and I, I really needed to have that base have a few different um, applications depending on the environment that you're in. So for this, now you would be able to use it onto, you know, a concrete base in front of a church, for instance, or or on the ground at a garden wedding. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. Then I essentially really roughly wrap 
bird wire. I think I, I've mentioned to you a few times in the past that I preferred bird wire over chicken wire. Again, it's much more pliable and the holes are closer together. So they seem to support my, my material better. And I just roughly, you know, twist the wire all the way to the top. Um, I find that that gives me much more freedom in covering the whole design rather than just adding pillows or pockets of wire. I do also make sure that the wire is like a skirt over this base. Now, you know, it's white, which is semi-helpful, uh, but you'll see that we, in this instance, we need to cover that base. You don't want to see that concrete at all. So I skirt the wire around the base so that I can add material. And I usually, today I'm using some casuarina. It will go over the grass as if this design is just growing out of the soil is essentially the design or the style I'm trying to create. Then we're attaching our water source. So this is the, the you know, the big question. Um, and something I did want to just bring up briefly is that this style of mechanics or, or, or these variety of, of techniques allows this to be so natural and just so fluid in the way it's put together. If you were doing this base mechanic and then adding blocks of foam or those little sausages, you would find that one, they would fall apart, two, they would be really, really heavy and you would find that the design would become too top heavy and then in danger of falling over. And the the water would be kind of dripping off the arrangement. So, you know, if you're setting this up essentially inside, you know, for a wet weather option, inside a venue on the carpet, you would not be able to do that with foam. So just wanted to always make sure that you're aware of the alternatives and why this is actually so much better. So I have used, <laughs> talk about recycling. These are my food tins, uh, you know, beans, spaghetti, whatever you have. Um, and I just wrap them in hessian so that they essentially disappear into the design. You'll be surprised how much they just, you don't see them at all. Twist the wire around them and then just attach them to the base and fill them around half with water. The vials, again, I yes, they're plastic, but I'm reusing. You can see the state of my tins. I have reused this stand many, many times over. And I fill my vials up. I love these big vials that you get off the orchids and um, some of your larger flowers. And again, using the bind wire. So the wire that's actually wrapped in paper. And I use the bind wire and attach them to the frame. And I just put them in strategic places on the stand um, because essentially if this is a design that is for a ceremony it's essentially only frontal you're not putting flowers all the way around the design um, if you were you would add, make sure that you added some water sources to the back of the arrangement as well uh, but for instance for today we will just be doing a, a potential like predominantly frontal arrangement. Um, I will co cover it all with foliages and greenery so you don't see any of the base mechanics, but most of the flower content and the value in the flowers will be at the front. Um, okay, so my next process is foliaging up the design. We're going to green it first and that allows me to create structure, uh, cover my mechanics and get a sense of the height and the width of the design. Okay, so let me just talk you through some foliages. Now I like to create with for this design something very soft and floaty. Nothing too heavy in this. Uh, depending on the type of design that you're creating, you could use uh, magnolia, uh, camellia, viburnum, those heavier leafed foliages. They do cover really well, but they do keep it quite heavy. So in order to create a really light ethereal feel, it makes sense that you would use some lighter foliage. So first of all, um, peppercorn. So I grow this on the property. I have quite a few trees of peppercorn. Uh, it's such a, actually that's not peppercorn. We'll get rid of that. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Um, the peppercorn, it, you can see it lasts really, really well out of water. And as you know, I've mentioned to you many, many times when you're uh, designing foam free, you need to be very 
uh, aware and and very confident in the materials that you use and that they will last well out of water and that just takes experience practice and making sure that you practice with your material before the event know what it's going to do so I know that peppercorn lasts really really well it's got a gorgeous feel really soft and flowy and I can use it in multiple ways on this design the other couple of stems that I just showed you a little bit then were my banksia rose and this is a, a variety you know also holds up well but you can see it can extend your design really easily, allow you to create that fake arch if you need to. So we'll see, I might use that, I might not, but I just wanted to show you that the, that's a Banksia rose. Um, the other foliage that, uh, for the base, I know that I said I want to keep it uh, really ethereal and soft, but you can see we need something quite dense and heavy to cover up our concrete base. So that's where some of the larger leaves or heavier leaves would come into play. Uh, so will this casuarina. You can see that just one part there piece will actually cover the um, concrete. And just like in nature, you've got your heavy um, you know, forms at the bottom growing up to something much lighter and softer at the top. So, you know, we want to make sure that it, that it has that sense of place and it looks like it actually belongs where it is. So that's, I will use for the base a little bit more. And then integrating into probably my favorite, um, material to use for these columns is asparagus fern. Uh, now I forage for this, it is on the side of the road <laughs> about 10 minutes from here and uh, it's growing in amongst the bush and um, unfortunately you can't always find asparagus fern now because it's actually not supposed to be sold in the flower market or grown because it, it in some places it's considered a noxious weed. Um, it's just growing in amongst everything else up the up the bush, so I can uh, pick it. Um, and it's got a gorgeous little berry on it. But for a substitute, um, things like wisteria, um, ivy, uh, there's uh, lots of other ferns that you could use, um, jasmine. You know, there's anything that, that has that light escapism, I think is really, really lovely. Um, so that's the materials I'm going to be using today. Okay, so before I start greening up, I just wanted to show you, I'm just adding a couple of extra bundles of vials. Um, and I also wanted to talk to you about the uh, shape of this stick. I'm sure you're looking at this going, wait, that is the most bent, you know, column I've ever seen. <laughs> It is a little, um, but you know, you can't always get a perfectly straight stick. So the reason why I don't worry about that, and I've used this many, many times, this, this uh, column, is that the way that you add your foliage uh, totally determines the shape of this design, not the branch underneath, because um, we're not designing really tight close to this. We're coming out and it will essentially be straight and have a really natural movement to it. So don't, uh, <laughs> don't judge my stick before you've seen the end result. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I added another uh, piece, uh, little piece of wire down here. just in case I wanted some flowers at the bottom here. I uh, just want to make sure that they're nice and tight. Okay. And one last little one at the top there, just in case I wanted to um, extend some more flowers out from there. Okay, let's get foliaging. So you're essentially <laughs> adding the foliage, just inserting it into that wire. Remember that once 
you're designing this in the space. You're not transporting this design already made. This is something that you would always do on site. And you know, that's important. And it's not a, it's not a hindrance at all because then you can design it for the landscape, you know? And if you were preparing it beforehand in the studio, you might decide, you know, you need to have it facing a different way or, or whatever. So I actually quite like designing on site. Um, it does give you a little bit extra pressure in regards to time. You need to be really confident in your timing and have, and have the extra time available to, um, you know, deal with every situation. But I allow myself, you know, usually a couple of hours to set this up. It doesn't take me that long. Once it's in its spot, they're actually really, really quick to make. Um, and often much quicker to a design than actually adding to an existing um, structure like an arbor. Okay, so you can see already that if this was the front, you have essentially hidden most of that um, concrete base. And I won't obviously stop it off there. We will add some of this um, casarina up in through this part of the design as well, just so that that same texture and same color sort of builds and starts to fade away. Okay, so with the fern, I'll just show you how I add in the fern. Look at this beautiful little berry that's hanging on this at the moment. I love it. Uh, so I don't usually cut down the fern. I usually just try to integrate it into the whole design. So I work from the base going up, but then also the top going down. And that's so that you don't end up with, you know, ends essentially anywhere. And we definitely want these lovely bits, you know, escaping from the top. So you can see that I've just twisted around, lightly thread it through the wire, done. Super simple, super easy. And uh, even though this is really soft and you might think, oh, it doesn't do, doesn't create a lot of coverage, it actually will. And before too long, you'll find that the wire and the branch just starts to magically disappear. It's just really cool. you'll find too with um, asparagus fern is that it has little sharp pieces which isn't very nice when it gets caught on your finger but it actually then holds onto the wire really well so I love that about it as well. So you can see just how quick and easy it is to do. Okay, so I have filled my little tins with water and my vials, they're all ready to go. Obviously you want to fill that up when you've got it in place. You don't want to have to pick it up and move it around and source water all over yourself and over the floor. Um, and then for any of my material that I know lasts really well out of water, it doesn't go into the little tins or the vials, which most of my foliages, when I choose those foliages, um, you know, don't need to be in water. Remember that this is an event design. This will essentially need to look amazing for the next five hours, which it will. I've gone to pick up these designs and they've looked sensational exactly the way I made them, um, you know, 24 hours later. So 
But if you were to use a softer foliage, something that you know that needed a water source, then that's all there for you. Uh, but for me, for these, these don't go in water at all. You can see how long I leave the stems and that's just so that I can, you know, manipulate them around. I don't want, um, I don't want it tight. I don't want it all really tight to the, to the, uh, to the post. And you can see that I'm taking some up from the bottom and some down from the top and they will all just magically you know, magically cover and you'll find that all the stems, all the stems are hidden. The water sources are really essentially there for your blooms. Okay. Okay, so now it's time to flower our floral column up. Uh, you can see that I've got a lovely variety of really romantic soft palette here. The David Austin roses, the pink lysianthus, they've got blossom, uh, some white frilly lizzies and some green um, sim uh, or, uh, sorry, sim carnations, uh, and also maybe some flannels. I have a little think about these, whether they need to come in here or not. So essentially what I like to, and this is purely a, a uh, I guess a design style decision, but when I'm creating the columns, I don't like the column to be all one block of florals. It could, you could do that. And you know, your bride might ask you for a, a full floral element. Uh, if it was up to me, and it is today, I like to create pockets of pop and pockets of colour and then calm your eye down through some foliages and then another pop of, foli of, of colour with the flowers and then calm and then another pop. I love that sense of grouping. I like that sense of um, movement that takes your eye up through the design rather just all looking a little heavy and one big block. So hence the reason why I've got my little tins and vials strategically placed throughout the stand. Um, and I also do like to add my flowers in groupings. Um, I think I've, I've told you that before. So, you know, there'll be three or four roses. Anyway, I'll stop talking and let's do it. Okay. So some of these David Austens you'll find do shatter. It's just part of the nature of David Austens. They are stunning garden roses, but they are also a little bit of a pain in the neck to use. Um, because they can sometimes just explode on you, but they're so beautiful. And the fragrance, let me tell you, is divine. Now you'll also see, notice then with my foliaging that you can see that you can hardly see the stand, can't see any of the wire. Um, and that was simply just out of that, you know, wasn't a whole lot of foliage that I used there. And yet it's been able to, you know, completely cover the base. I'm just adding my flowers to my tin. I will give them some length as well uh, so that they're not all super tight and close to the tin, but I just did want to start with a nice little block. You'll see also that I've created a, a sense of escaping arch with this Banksia rose. It escapes over and essentially if the other one was beside, it could almost, almost link up together. Okay, so with your roses, I highly recommend that you strip those ends because with the other flowers, they're really smooth stem, but thorns and wire aren't friends, as you can imagine. <laughs> so you can essentially, these longer stems, extend it so that there's not, they're not just blobs of flowers where the, where the tins are, and take your flower through the wire and just so long as its stem reaches the pot or the water source, they, your flowers don't essentially look like they're all coming from the one place. Do you know what I mean? So they can kind of grow throughout the design a little bit. 
I'm also going to show you, we'll do use the lisianthus. So essentially what I'm going to show you now is just a, a couple of different areas. I'm just going to flower up a little bit of it because the same technique I'm using, you know, again and again and again. And I'll come back to you when it's completely finished. Lizzie's are perfect. These are actually head Lizzie's. You'll see that they are quite short and they also last exceptionally well out of water. So even if I did want to just place it in there through the wire, you can see how quick they are to work with and they're essentially not in, in the water source at all. But when they're nestled in, they just add this lovely depth to the to, de to the design so that as you look in through the greenery you'll just see that there's some other lovely flowers in low and you can buy these head lizzies they're called from the lizzie growers and they're essentially the first flower that grows on the stem so obviously this is your your other stem of lisianthus okay lovely long stems these ones are the first flower on the crop and rather than just throwing those away, they cut them off, pop them into these little bunches and sell those at the market for usually around um, anywhere between sort of five and six dollars a bunch. Uh, I think I might have even got these for four um, this week, which was awesome. And there's usually 10 in a stem. Now the other benefit of using those large um, rose, uh, sorry, water vials is that the hole on the plastic rubber top is actually quite wide and for any of these smaller stems you can essentially add about five or even more stems through the one vial, um, you know, little top. So don't feel like it's just one vial, one flower like you would normally do when you, in, you know, designing and floristry. Um, let's incorporate some of this beautiful cream. Look at that, it's just gorgeous. Mm -mm -mm. And you'll see that there's another little tin in here. And the foliage actually supports the, the flower when it goes in. So as it's going in, you can see the foliage will support that lovely heavy head nice clean stems on these ones so again I'll just show you keeping that length I can go in through the wire straight into the tin and give that lovely extension in height look 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 isn't that just divine summer in Australia I tell you this is what epitome of summer for me is gum blossom and uh, beautiful eucalypt, just snuggle pot and cuddle pie if you're familiar with those stories. Very iconic Australian uh, stories by Mae Gibbs. And you can see they're quite a strong pink uh, for this, for all of those lovely soft colours. But I knew the tone would work really well with my Lysianthus. You can see that's the same sort of tone pink um, and a little bit deeper colour for the... Uh, for the roses but again you know your your gum blossom is going to work perfectly over a period of a few hours out of water so if you know if there's a spot that you feel that it needs to be and it's not where your tin is um, don't worry about it you there will be certain elements that you can um, you know add without them being in a water source quite confidently so I'm going to keep playing here. Uh, I need to jump in front of the design and start seeing where I want to create these little pockets of, of blossom and bloom. And uh, I'll be back to you with it almost completely finished. Okay, so here we have it, 
our beautiful floral column. I just love it. I love the tones. I love the, the soft and really romantic nature of it. I ended up putting the flannels in. I couldn't resist. They're one of my favorite flowers, but you can see where they're just placed in there together, together into the vial, into the little um, tins. And I hope you can see that, you know, there's there's space and there's air between each floral placement, at, which allows the value and the efficiency of the way you've used the material so you can see every flower that's in the design. Yes, there's depth and there's, um, you know, some coming out towards you and some in deeper and that will give you that sense of three-dimensional and, and that sense of lush and, and, and richness. I've also taken the Lysianthus down onto the ground. They, were, they aren't in water. But as I said to you earlier, the Lizzie's last really well out of a water source. And given that they're laying on the ground, you're not going to notice if they get a little soft anyway. Just so that that design just creeps into the ground. And I love how that flows then from the outer edge of the design up through and then into this beautiful arch as well. Um, just extended some of those, the Lysianthus there to, to continue with that curve and essentially you could continue that even more if you had some longer stems. Um, what else did I want to tell you about it? I hope you love it. I really love it. <laughs> now as always with my designs, once I get to this point, have a really good look at everything, make sure that I'm looking at it with, with uh, fresh eyes. I also often take a quick photo with my phone and actually look at it on my phone. It has the same, um, I don't know what it does, but it's the same as when I'm working with a bouquet and I actually uh, design in front of the mirror. As soon as I look into the mirror, I can see where something needs to be moved or changed and often doing, you know, looking into your phone camera is the same. So we've done that and I'm adding my last little moments, which, you know, if you've watched a few of my tutorials now, you'll know they're my little hey you moments. And this is just adding those last little finishing touches, those little moments of escapism. And although this is quite airy anyway, I found this Ruby Jewels, so the grower tells me, which I'm sure there's an actual real name. And I did quiz him and told him that wasn't the name. That's a made up name. Uh, but he wouldn't he didn't know <laughs> and so he's just told me it's ruby jewels but I love this it's like a little berry uh, the, all the buds are like autumny sort of yellows and oranges into this magenta and I just thought it added such a lovely dimension to this but still super super soft so I'm just going to put these uh, pieces in into little mini bundles so they're going in you know three and four pieces at a time and these won't need to be in water either they will last really well for a few hours and then it lives gives me the freedom now to pop them in wherever i feel they should go not be restricted from where the tins or the vials are okay so just going to pop around here and Add those down through the wire. You've got so much construction now with all the branches that they just stay there really easily, really effortlessly. And you'll see when we start adding this in, I don't want them to escape too much. I don't want them out on a, you know, um, horizontal angle or anything. Um, and you may not be able to see them, you know, they're quite transparent, but I just love the way, the colour for one, I just love this colour with this, um, with the blossom, but I just love the way that it just adds, you know, essentially this is a transitional material. So just like you would add baby's breath at the end or something like that, this is, is just that beautiful soft transitional element that leads, that sort of grabs your eye right from the start and draws it into the design. Oh. I love it. I love it. So I'm just going to play here, add a few more of these ruby jewels into this design. And then when I come back, um, I'll just talk you through the finished product and I'll uh, see you soon.
And to finish off, I just wanted to join you back here at the pond to show you the finished product. Just a couple of things on varieties of flowers that I can recommend that you can use in this. One thing that I, another benefit, I guess, of, of not using, uh, you know, foam and foam type products is that you can use some really beautiful soft flowers. And one of the most gorgeous columns I've made is actually using poppies, which you would never be able to use if you had foam um, mechanics. So, you know, poppies, uh, I've also made these in just one particular flower, so all uh, grevillea once, it was just stunning. Uh, so, you know, they can be mixture, you can be all one flower and keep it really minimal and really quite modern, um, or have it quite wild and garden and organic like it is here. Um, I also wanted to share with you, I guess you can, uh, my stark dark outfit today is actually this is this is how I go to do any a wedding event um, or reception setup. I think it's important to stay really professional, really comfortable, um, and almost disappear into the background. You're not there uh, to be on show. You're there as part of the hired help uh, to set up your design and to strictly run away. So I just wanted to kind of really mimic um, the same uh, process that I do when I'm doing a, a wedding or event setup and uh, sort of share that with you as well. Um, if you've got any questions about this, I know you may have. There's uh, you know, it's a it's an interesting design. It's very different from anything that you may have seen before. So please let me know. Uh, pop the questions in the in the comments box below, and I'll definitely get back to you. I, this will be the first of many designs that I do specifically for you in the industry. Um, techniques that I can share that you can build upon, and you can use this same branch wire technique on so many different applications. So every time I show you a new design, I want you to be able to take away from that and expand and just, you know, go crazy yourself with, with lots of innovations. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you've had a beautiful day. I hope you've enjoyed this design as much as I've loved making it for you. And um, I think it needs to go sit somewhere where I can have a cup of tea next week. All right, everyone. See you. Bye.